You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. When Takana came up by Mike and the team, which you'll hear about from Mike in a moment here, this was not an opportunity to pivot from Sombrero. This was an opportunity to add more to the bottom line. Two multi-kilometer trends of copper nickel mineralization, that's high grade. And so they've really sort of put us in the driver's seat. I would say for us to recreate something like this would take a minimum of three years. Uh, and so we just get to be in the driver's seat immediately with this thing. Um, with respect to the grades and kind of what it looks like, I'll flash it up here early, just because I like to, sh to show this kind of thing. That's 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 copper nickel. This is what we're after. And this this is high grade. You know, this will run a percent plus copper, you know, half a percent to a percent nickel. It's magmatic sulfide. So a little bit of a different model. Um, but for us, the key here is it fits with the theme of the company. Welcome back. I'm Bill Powers. This is Mining Stock Education. And in today's show, we're going to be getting an update from Sombrero Resources. Now, as you know, we've been covering Orin Resources for about two years. And about a year ago, Orin combined with East Main Resources resources to found Fury Resources and then spun out Tier 1 Silver, which is now trading, and Sombrero Resources, which has been unlisted. So we're going to be getting an update from Ivan Bebek, its chair and seat president, as well as its chief geologist, Michael Henriksen. So gentlemen, welcome to the show. Ivan, you have a lot of prospectivity and expectation regarding the Sombrero project, which in Peru, which you don't have access to yet, but now you've announced a new highly prospective copper nickel acquisition. Tell us about this and how did it come into the company? Great. Uh, just before we do that, Bill, um, I'll talk a little bit about the path here. As you commented, um, Orin Resources uh, post Caden, which we sold to Agnico Eagle in 2015. Many of you know that um, we went out to go find the world's biggest mines. And our ambition was fueled by two things, by a world-class technical team that comes from Newmont. These are some of the best in the entire industry and the detail and level of work is, is on par with that. But more importantly, and this really ties into Takana, the, the thing we just acquired is we wanted to go out and, and acquire all the best assets and best assets were really hard to come by, by not just by juniors, by major mining companies prior to a bull market that we've obviously, you know, got in a bit early ahead of ourselves not just with Orin, but as investors, it hasn't really taken shape yet. Although you're seeing copper now over $4 a pound and gold is flirting again with $1,800, $2,000 an ounce. You know, our, our ambition here with Sombrero Resources has been to get as much as we can before the market turns. And what we faced has been, and we'll talk about it later today, a delay or a time process with communities that's somewhat out of our control. However, we're getting very close. And when Takana came up by Mike and the team, which you'll hear about from Mike in a moment here, this was not an opportunity to pivot from Sombrero. This was an opportunity to add more to the bottom line. And you know, for the companies, Fury Gold Mines or Tier 1 Silver, where I'm chair of both of those entities, I'm president CEO here of Sombrero Resources. And I get to go all hands on deck with the team and, and and drive this forward. So I wanted more and the team wanted more and we only wanted more if it met the thresholds of Michael Henriksen and his team. And, and that's certainly what Takana does. Excellent. So Michael, uh, you kind of gave me the back uh, gr round of this project acquisition, which I thought was very intriguing. Share with listeners how this project came to you. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the Takana district is about 50,000 hectares as a starting point. It's got, you know, dozens of targets across it. But what really stood out to me was the quality of data and where it actually originated from. Um, you know, what we have here is highly skilled technical folks uh, who were sort of the generation before me at Newmont uh, put this together in a private uh, entity. Um so with respect to their approach, it's identical to, to the same schooling I had at Newmont. Uh, excellent stream sediment surveys, uh, airborne surveys, um, great follow-up, uh, multi, two multi-kilometer trends of copper nickel mineralization that's high grade. And so they've really sort of put us in the driver's seat. I would say for us to recreate something like this would take a minimum of three years uh, and so we just get to be in the driver's seat immediately with this thing. Um, with respect to the grades and kind of what it looks like, I'll flash it up here early just because I like to, sh to show this kind of thing. That's, that's, that's copper nickel. 
this is what we're after. And this, this is high grade, you know, this will run a percent plus copper, you know, half a percent, two percent nickel. It's magmatic sulfide. So a little bit of a different model. Um, but for us, the key here is it fits with the theme of the company. Uh, base metals, copper, nickel, they go great together. But also that big district look, dozens of targets, multi-kilometer long trends of copper nickel mineralization. You know, and for me to be to come into a project like this where it's so well set up and we can advance it rapidly, I think this is going to be a really accretive move for the company moving forward. So because they laid out these targets for you already, how soon could we actually see the drills turning? Do you have an estimated timeline? Um, it's probably a touch early to get that, uh, to give you a firm timeline. Um, so far our receptions with the communities have been very good. Um, so we're, we're definitely feeling quite positive on that. Then we actually got to, you know, do the work, say, yes, this is do where we want to drill, um, and then go through the process of the drill permitting. But I would say, you know, we'd be looking to do it within, have a drill turning within 12 to 18 months. You know, that would be the goal. Ivan, when you structured this deal, it's uh, front end, the payments aren't too uh, burdensome. Back end is where the money will be uh, given over for payment. But of course, you'd probably determine whether you want to keep it by then or not, right? Sure. I mean, uh, we just had Mike show uh, a rock from Takana on our presentation. So there's, there's obviously a lot of ambition and optimism here. But, you know, the deal we wanted to do was one that's mindful of dilution. You know, a lot of people heard we might put a second asset into Sombrero, and we didn't want to do something that was extremely dilutive right out the gate until we knew that it would be something spectacular. And what we see right now is we got a couple of years where the payments are very modest and more money is going to go into the ground than towards the owners who are very much aligned with us on driving this to the distance. Um, you asked a good question about when will this get drilled 12, 12 months plus around within 12 months. I mean, we're going to take initiatives that we've learned and you saw how fast we permitted Curry Baya. That was about six months from pressing go. We've learned a bit of strategy here is that uh, if you draw the polygon early and you know once you have enough confidence of the target area, it's a lot less disruptive to move pads around later where you want to drill but you get your permit out the gate and you can get through all that thick kind of permit waiting things that, that happen early. So from this project, it's going to go side by side with Sombrero. It's going to be very exciting along the way. Um, the three years that we saved is a very important thing of the quality of the work of where it sits today. It's kind of a, you know, for orange shareholders or Sombrero shareholders, we're at the final stages of getting through the Sombrero access and permits but on the same time, we pick up a project that I would argue is just as good as Sombrero in the early stages. It has some historical drilling and has potential to be potentially even better going forward. But you get to start three years of data is ahead of you that you can use. So time is being saved, time is being used. But the opportunity in front of us is substantial now with Sombrero and with Takana. These are base metals that are essential to everything that you we all use daily, you know, towards the copper market or the battery markets in terms of the, the nickel. So I think, think we are in the top spectrum of performing commodities that are going to really backstop the value that can come out of any kind of discoveries that happen here or at Sombrero. If we do face, you know, cumbersome delays at Sombrero, I mean, nothing is perfect. There's risk in everything we do. Um, this is a phen phenomenal project that could take center stage. Or if Sombrero takes off and we get the access and are drilling it tomorrow, you know, figuratively speaking, in the next three to six months, then you have this in the backstop that may be, you know, a secondary way to reward shareholders. So what we wanted at Sombrero, and I'll caution you and everyone now, the name is going to change because Takana deserves as much respect as Sombrero does. And I'm saying that based off of the quality of work that's led to the opportunities that are at Takana that also will rival what's what's at Sombrero. And, you know, we've had a lot of incoming calls since we've acquired this second asset from major mining companies that have noticed the district, the kind of grades we're seeing. And, you know, I think it's going to be a spectacular start to Sombrero or, or what the new company name will be when it starts trading. So Ivan, what is still in the way of relisting? Is it access at Sombrero or drill permits at Takana? Is that what I'm understanding here? 
No, no. I, either Axis and a 43101 at Takana, which is the 43101 is underway. And so are the Axis arrangements. We believe it won't be as challenging as Sombrero. And then at the Sombrero side, you know, we, we keep having these meetings with the communities and it seems like the never ending story. And I get a lot of questions. When's the next meeting? What happened in the last meeting? And I'll go out and say the next meeting is August 29th. Is that going to be conclusive? We hope it to be. Could that get moved to September 15th or September 30th? 30th, it very much could, but we, we've done a lot here. And Michael, Christian Rios, and the community team, we're very mature within our communities. We've earned the respect. We've shown them what we're there to do. We've offered huge programs for them going forward. And I like to say that a big part of our delays had nothing to do with us in the communities. It's their own internal politics or issues that face them, you know, such as one of their boundaries in a, in a different community that affects that, that kind of puts us on the back burner from time to time. It feels great, you know, where we stand. I feel very confident that we're going to drive ahead here and get access agreements shortly. In the best case scenario, if we do get access at the end of this month, we probably see a listing timeline within 60 days of that access being granted. And I think that's, you know, we're, we're ready to go. We've done as much as we can to kind of forward anticipate the listing steps to get listed. We want to be listed as quickly as possible. And at the same time, we're lining up, you know, programs and drilling aspects of where we're going to drill and, and constant news flow for the company, which is going to be very, very busy once we kind of get these access agreements. Uh, final point to make there is, you know, the, the whole whole process seems long and it is definitely as long it's taking longer than we advertised and you know we have to speculate that's that's what we're forced to do but the longer things take in this case and scenario you know the question you have to ask yourself as a shareholder waiting for your shares to trade is it going to be worth it or not in the end and you know i think tier one opened extremely well we're waiting on the first few holes to come back now but in the case of sombrero and now Takana, you know i think we've brought a lot more for shareholders to look forward to when we trade and I don't think it'll be that much longer and we get to enjoy, you know, incredibly great commodity prices on the backstop. So I think we're, we're in a really good place here, Bill. And I think it, it trades sooner than later. But we we're finally talking about Sombrero and interviews. These will be some very frequent with developments that we have. We'll keep you very close to the story as things progress, but plan to hear a lot more of these interviews as we start to make our final runway towards a listing in the coming months. And will you be listing on the big board in Toronto or the venture exchange? First choice is big board. Um, you know, if we qualify and, and the qualifying factor would be some very access, we, we might be able to, to pull it on the Takana side, but I can't speak out of turn there. That's our goal. If we have to start listing on the venture, I don't mind that because it wouldn't be very long before we qualify for the big board. And the most important aspect of listing on the big board in Toronto, which gives a lot of access to both US and Canadian investors, is that you need a third dimension to show that there's economic mineralization in the third dimension. And if you remember back to the Furaso holes at Sombrero, there are some spectacular holes that demonstrate that third dimension is there, not just a surface expression. So it's it's exciting. You know, for me, when I talk about it, I get excited again because, you know, of the 11, 12 kilometer footprint that goes off those past drill holes. And I start to think about the third dimension, which is what we're all here for. And then now having something like Takana. And I will talk a bit about nickel. It's very similar to silver. You know, it's obviously not just by color and the way it looks, but the uses are, are, are profound in terms of the, the electric side of the business. But the stocks that have performed well with nickel, they tend to outperform the way silver does a lot of the peers in the space. So when you get in this business, I started by looking for gold mines. I'm a gold bug to heart, and I will never stop looking for gold mines. That's that's my passion. But silver was, was definitely a box I wanted to, to check because it... it outperforms every other metal in terms of equities. And nickel is the other one that's a close second to silver. So I think having a, a robust copper nickel portfolio is going to really, really give us, you know, a proper, proper opportunity coming forward to create some real value for shareholders. And the last point I'll make, Bill, is uh, the size, the size of the things at Takana. They're big. There's something called Okabamba you'll hear a lot about in the South. It's got the least amount of work done on it, but it's got one of the biggest targets, you know, in that land position. There's so much we haven't seen yet. The surface has been roughly just scratched. And the question I think you need to ask Michael Henriksen and investors probably have right now is how come this was available to you guys? You know, why did you get this and, and why was it just sitting there? And Mike, why don't you talk a little bit about the narrative 
how this came our way and why it wasn't being explored by, by the previous people or somebody else. Well, I think, you know, uh, in a way, it's similar to, to the Sombrero District. You know, when we first arrived at Sombrero, everybody thought, what are you guys doing? You know, all the big mines are out to the east, you know. And then later we proved that, in fact, it's the extension of a world class belt. So, you know, a little bit of thinking outside of the box. With respect to Takana, as I said, it comes from very astute technical people. It comes from uh, a, a, a very well known geologist who's extremely experienced in nickel. Uh, here in Canada, who's had great commercial successes. And, you know, my perception of the amount of targets that are there, the grades that I see, and then his comments to me, where he's saying, hey, listen, uh, this is absolutely legitimate. You know, it's early days here. I understand that. But this is how deposits are found. This is the signature that I've been around in my career. And, you know, he's he's at the end of his career. He's in retirement. And, you know, he, he would have been driving this forward himself. Uh, however, it's just uh, he wanted to see it go into good hands, you know, because he really, truly believes in it. And he, and he said, OK, you know, you guys go out and do the right exploration. You know, I think you got a discovery or two on your hands here. So for us, when we look at Takana, you know, OK, it's going to be an emerging story. People are going to be like, what copper nickel, this part of Peru, what are you guys doing? But all you have to do is look at the data Two multi-kilometer long trends of high grade copper nickel mineralization, geophysical surveys with conductors, like the exact things that you need to see to believe that the scale can be world-class. And so that's, that's how we're operating here within the company. We want to have things that majors want, that they covet. And what we've done is we've put together just an absolutely phenomenal land position with the extension of a world-class belt at the Andawalas Yari Sombrero District. And now this brand new copper nickel, uh, you know, scenario that's coming into, into the company where I think we can really turn heads here and people are going to pay a lot of attention to this based on the quality of the data that we see. Michael, leading up to drilling, uh, what are you doing? Desktop work and do you have uh, boots on the ground there on the project? We should have boots. Right now we're doing our initial forays into the community, right? Obviously you got to have good relations off the, off the start, start of things. So that's what we plan to do. From there, uh, we'll get some community agreements and and start plowing through into the into the field work. You know, we need boots on the ground. We need to see what these things are. We need to go to some of these geophysical anomalies, check them, see yes, okay, that that's legitimate. We're going to go do this. Uh, you know, and get a drill program together. So, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of you know. Uh, channel sampling early. Some of the initial channel sampling that's being done across this district has been uh, f- fabulous. I mean, that's re- reported in our press release. Um, and we we plan to expand on that, but more importantly, start linking it to the drill target. That's the key. Ivan, uh, you've talked in the past about how you've had offers from the major to finance the exploration at Sombrero. Can you bring us up to speed regarding your treasury and possible sources of future funding? Sure. And uh, thank you all who've offered since our the Rick Rule Symposium offered to be part of the next financing. Um, we sit with about $5 million in the Treasury right now, just under. This will take us to the end of basically Q1 without needing to go back to market to raise. And we plan to be trading prior to that. We most certainly will need to finance before we list. We would want to demonstrate at least 18 months of working capital and drilling capital here before we get trading. Um, where we sit here, Bill, is... Um, the conversations with major, majors have, have not stopped and we're going to entertain those right to prior to listing. And there's some great partners out there that we could take on, you know, the caliber and scope of Sombrero or now Takana. It's uh, obviously both are being reviewed extensively, but uh, there's, there's multiple parties that have expressed interest. If terms can be met and both sides can, can come away from a deal that works in terms of price and, and rules of, you know, the corporate investment, then we most certainly would welcome that. Alternatively, if we do come to market instead and do another financing as we did on tier one before listing, there's no doubt in our mind that there's plenty of capital available to drive ahead. Where we sit right now is in the next 30 to 40 days, probably by middle or or late September, we're going to have a lot of clarity. Uh, We'll come out with another interview with you guys, uh, probably first week of September post the August uh, meeting that happens in the communities. 
even if it's a delay, we're going to be a lot more frequent with the updates and kind of guiding expectations and letting people know where things are at. But you're going to start to hear about developments over at Takana sooner than later. And uh, we hope to be on boots on the ground there sometime in September. And once we're on there, you know, it's verification of targets and expanding targets. It's not trying to find targets. And that's a very important place to be. So I think Q4 is going to be extremely active from the news perspective of our company. And hopefully it's to get trading here very quickly and then enjoy some of those new trenches that are going to come out of Sombrero prior to drilling on some of the surrounding targets that are some of our best surface samples have been taken today, uh, as well as at Takana, just getting to the whole market to learn how, how robust these targets really are. So early days, exciting days ahead, a lot of news, no need for capital until end of Q1. So we have breathing room to make the most intelligent decision for shareholders on whether a well-placed corporate investor is the way to go, or we do another funding ourselves. And in the background, as I said, probably too many times today, the, the rising copper prices and, and nickel prices that we see not short-term, but long-term, and some of the shortages that are plaguing these major mining companies in terms of discoveries, right? Big projects take time, and it's a cliche, but it's true, and they take time to get there. But once you get into one of these discoveries, you know, the, the benefit is not a decade of mining. It, it could be a 50 to 75-year mine life. You find something big enough, and the reward for shareholders would be once in a lifetime, once in a career for us, to go tag one of these big ones, you know, as a discovery and seeing Sombrero now and Takana, you know, copper and nickel, you know, I think you now have double the opportunity here. It's being well managed financially and the excitement to drilling is going to be substantial once things come back trading and drilling sometime uh, early next year would be the absolute ambition if we can. All right. Well, thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Michael. The company's website again is sombreroresources.com. It's not listed, but if you bought shares uh, a year ago, like I did, then you have these unlisted shares that will hopefully eventually in the next few months become tradable. And if you're intrigued and want to become an investor, again, just sign up because the company will email you updates as they occur. And you can also follow the progress on this podcast. So thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you.